This review was made possible by contributions from viewers like you. Hey guys, last week we talked about the birth of Jesus, sort of, and now we're going to talk about the next most important thing about the holiday season, commercialism. There are those who would say that commercialism is ruining the spirit of Christmas, but I say fooey to them. We know how to make movies and TV shows that tell a good story while selling a product at the same time, so why not do more of that? Today's movie, Holly and Hal Moose, our uplifting Christmas adventure, comes to us from the Build-A-Bear workshop. As its name would imply, Build-A-Bear specializes in making custom teddy bears and other plush toys. They're also no stranger to making tie-in plushies for all sorts of other properties. Tell me, do you fluff? You will. Could this concept of making custom teddy bears make the transition to cinema? Let's take a look at Holly and Hal Moose, our uplifting Christmas adventure, and find out. After the opening credits, we meet our main characters, Holly and Hal Moose. Oh, they're cute! Yes, they are cute. Hey, most of the stuff you show me is not cute. Let me enjoy this. Eh, fair enough. Anyway, we meet our main characters, Holly and Hal Moose. Holly is bummed out because she had plans to go to her friend's birthday party, but she has to stay home and look after her stupid little brother instead. She berates him for dreaming of flying like Santa's reindeer, which is a weird thing for which to berate him. There's no question that Santa Claus does exist in this world, and if he can use his magic to make reindeer fly, then what's so ridiculous about Santa making a moose fly? Or does Holly say it's impossible because Santa has an image to maintain and he only hires reindeer? And what's Holly's dream? To grow up to become a famous singer. You might think that this would eventually reach some kind of resolution by movie's end, but no, it's never mentioned again. It's completely pointless. Oh, and look! She has a teddy bear that she had to have had custom made, since it's wearing the same pajamas that she has. Subtle plug! Holly, do you see that? Look up there! Pretty! And that's the Aurora Borealis, the Northern Lights. That's not the Northern Lights, that's magic! Look! Here, I'll read what I underlined. At Christmas time, a magical light resembling the Northern Lights is known to appear in the sky. Some call it the Spirit of Christmas. Oh my god, the magical Christmas icicle is infecting other movies! Damn you, Santa Buddies! Actually, it's not quite as stupid as the Christmas icicle. Instead, it's just an aura of positive energy that, when followed, would lead anyone determined enough to find Santa's hidden workshop. Then, on a completely unrelated note, Hal who I'm sure doesn't have any ulterior motives whatsoever, convinces Holly to swing by the party for a few minutes, and she agrees. Do you hear that? It's got to be coming from the party! Moosek! Ah! Thankfully, that's one of only two moose puns in the entire movie. Anyone else thankfully surprised? But oh no! Hal uses the opportunity to sneak off and look for Santa! Later, during someone's special effects practice, we find a couple of meteorologist elves at the North Pole who are worried about the biggest storm in history looming on the horizon. Mayday! Mayday! Heads up! Seek shelter! Run for your lives! Grab the red phone! Not the red phone! Yes, Commissioner. They call up Santa Claus and tell him that the storm is reaching Al Gore levels, but he tells them not to worry about it. Christmas has never been cancelled, and it never will be. A little bad weather never stopped us before. How big is this storm? Nothing. 
So Holly looks for Hal as the weather gets increasingly worse. Ugh. Right. As if I'd forget today. Don't forget my party is the other moose pun in this movie. Now we can move on. She coincidentally stumbles upon Hal in an underground cave, where he's already made a little fire for himself. You might be asking where he got the firewood for this, but considering his rather outdoorsy attire, I'm just going to assume that he always carries a bit of firewood on him, since in this kind of environment, there's a very thin line between comfortable suburban living and survivalism. But the question still remains, how are they going to get out of here? Hey! Whoa! Look up there! It's the North Star! Starlight, Starbright, first star I see tonight. I wish I may, I wish I might, have the wish I wish tonight. Sorry, but this wish only works on January 5th, and you probably shouldn't wish for things while ripping off Disney. Luckily, that opening in the cave just happens to break open more to allow them to climb out, and they escape into... Christmas Town? Hmm. There's only one way down! Nothing can stop me! <laughs> so this is what it's like. This is what it feels like to be flying! Uh, uh -oh. <laughs> you see, Crest Animation? If you sled down a hill that has snow on it, it looks much less like you're defying... Physics! 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 Incoming! Heads up! Yeah. Well, so much for that. Hal should be dead now. Oh dear, some of the normies have discovered Santa's secret compound. Now Santa will have to kill you. <laughs> Hal says that he wants to fly with Santa's reindeer, but the reindeer aren't exactly open to the idea of a moose flying with them. Moose don't fly. Everybody knows that. That's racist. And why do the reindeer have New York accents? If anything, shouldn't they sound Canadian? Only reindeer can fly, you moose! Excuse me, but flying happens to be my brother's dream. Where would anyone be without their dreams? Awake. <laughs> it's already too much of a stretch to believe that Santa's reindeer would be assholes, but why are they dismissive of dreams? They work for Santa Claus! They deliver dreams! Sorry, my boy. Not that we don't see our fair share of magic around here. The truth is, I've never heard of a moose that can fly. But reindeer flying is completely normal? What's with the moose hate? Santa says that Hal can help the reindeer in their flight simulator. Because that's a thing, apparently. When the weather elves show up again to reiterate that the worst storm in history is on its way. But Santa remains undeterred. Do we give up? No! Do we wrap ourselves in a blanket and hide in the lodge? No! Until the moment that big storm grounds us and all hope is lost, what do we do? We believe! We work! We tinkle all the way! We tinkle all the way? And what's up with these elves anyway? They look like Curious George got freaky with all the who's down in Whoville. And don't Santa's elves usually wear the same clothes? I guess it must be Casual Friday. While Hal goes off to help with the flight simulator, Holly is put to work repairing broken toys in the toy factory. Then the shop gets attacked by... a tiny toy robot that anyone can stop just by stepping on it. Nothing can stop me! Nothing can stop me! Nothing can stop Torg. I know how to stop you. Ugh. And why didn't the elves know how to stop it? Yes, Mrs. Claus said earlier that they aren't that big on technology, but they had to have built that robot, so why wouldn't they know how to turn it off? Why wouldn't they be that big on technology anyway? They're surrounded by technology! Maybe they're not as up-to-date as they could be, like they're still delivering Nintendo Entertainment Systems while the rest of the world is playing the Nintendo Switch, but they aren't strangers to technology! Or do vacuum tubes, treadmills, electric lights, and radio-controlled helicopters not count? Oh, I get it. She was able to turn it off because she's the only one who has a cell phone, which means that she's up with the times. Granted, it's a flip phone in the year 2011, but she's up with the times. This technophobic elf says that Holly can keep the robot for herself. I like him. I'll call you Will Hal. Hello. 
He's just a little different. Needs a few adjustments. Don't we all? Little Hal needs a few adjustments. Wink. Come on, Little Hal. Stop winking at Little Hal. It's creepy. We then cut to the flight training center, as is indicated by the sign which is whimsically written in Comic Sans, while everything else in this North Pole looks like it's in the same font used in Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Nice consistency, movie. Speaking of consistency, I'm very confused by the opinions on technology in this movie. The elves are supposed to be more old-fashioned, despite their own use of tech, but the reindeer invented a simulator to get them used to all kinds of weather conditions and different rooftops from all around the world. Are reindeer just naturally more innovative than elves? While the reindeer take a muffin break, Santa lets Hal take the simulator for a spin. Apparently his antlers help him stay in the air because... Physics! 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 But getting in the air is still problematic. Oh, who's this? He's an electric buzzing toy that I named after my little brother. Stop snickering! Then Holly steps outside so we can get... This scene. Look up there, do you see? A million possibilities. I see someone singing a love ballad about her brother! They say that these magical northern lights are supposed to be the energy of dreams or something, so it would totally make sense if she saw other people's dreams in this little montage. The Wright Brothers first flight, Walt Disney opening Disneyland, that kind of thing. But no, all we see in this magical dream light is visions of her brother. The unintentional squick factor is off the charts! Later, at the Not Build-A-Bear workshop, Holly is determined to make up some kind of invention to get Hal off the ground. Oh yeah. Rather than stick with her original task of mending whatever broken toys need fixing, she's now more focused on getting her brother up. I thought we could use these old sled runners for springs. To give him liftoff! <laughs> Exactly, little Hal. Hmm. But I think I need help bending them. How strong are you? Nothing can stop me! Remove the runners. <laughs> okay. You should not be that excited by little Hal going between your legs. They make a pair of spring shoes for Hal. Sufficient springs! Then they find him... sleeping in a stable? Uh, Santa... You are aware that these moose are walking upright and wearing clothes, right? They may not be human, but they are people. You might put your reindeer in stables like this, but you couldn't give these kids an actual room to stay in? And does Hal need to be splayed out like that? Combine that with this incredibly awkward shushing gesture from Holly, this scene looks like it's going to turn really bad really fast. Now that that's done... There's something else I'd like to do now. Let's bring the century. Who are they to judge our love? They're all on the wrong side of history! Actually, she makes little Hal eat all of the elves' notes and regurgitate their information onto a spreadsheet because... she has a cell phone and that makes her a tech head, I guess. I also question the necessity to do this, since Santa has been getting along just fine without modernizing for hundreds of years. Stop messing with the system, Holly! I fear they're right about the storm. Okay, hold it. What is she wearing? Santa's wearing mittens and thick flannel, so he looks like he's trying to protect himself from the cold. Why is the missus wearing a little pleated skirt and high-heeled fuzzy slippers? Is she dressed up for those cold winter nights, too? Then Holly shows up, still holding hands with little Hal. Then we get this weird little bit of information. What time did you leave school, dear? About 3.40. That's the time it is where you came from. But... it stopped. That's right. We stopped time so we can get all of our preparations done. In Santa's village, time moves forward, while in the rest of the world, it's held back. Of course! Don't you know anything about science? So, time is slower at the North Pole, meaning that barely any time will have passed between the kids getting off the bus and finally getting home. How convenient that these kids won't face any consequences from their worried mother when they finally do get home. Why does she keep a little man wearing little pants tugging on a rope in her closet? Let you in on another little secret. 
We stop time on Christmas Eve, too. Have to. It's the only way I can deliver all the presents to all the children of the world. They let time run naturally again, which results in the storm kicking up and the beginning piano riff from the X-Files theme. Wait a minute. The storm's only now raging outside because of you starting up time again? Just stop it! If stopping time stops bad weather, and you stop time every Christmas Eve so you can make your deliveries on time, why is bad weather even a factor? Meanwhile, Hal's been making good use of his new spring boots until he crashes into the snow. Holly helps him up and reveals that she was the one who made the boots for him. You helped make my dream come true. I don't know what to say. I thought you didn't care. Not care? I didn't think you would ever notice how much I do care. You know, siblings are going to argue with each other on occasion. There'll be times where they don't like each other. But at the end of the day, it's going to take a lot for siblings to not love each other. I thought you didn't care. Ah, uh, come on, you're my little brother. Of course I care about you. If a sibling confesses love for the other sibling, that's more or less how it usually goes down, or something like that. But... I didn't think you would ever notice how much I do care. That sounds like something you would say to someone who you've been pining for for years. I love you, little brother. And I love you too, sis. And I don't even care if I fly with Santa's team. Because you and I, we make the best team in the whole world. Hal, we're gonna try and take off ASAP while the storm has subsided. Hey, we need your help with the harnesses. Hey, hey. <clears throat> Once you're done, here, of course. What do you think you walked in on? Santa assembles his sleigh team to make their rounds, but it doesn't look like they're going anywhere. Then Holly shows up with a bunch of moose antlers, which were apparently really popular in 2011. What? Don't you remember wearing moose antlers in 2011? And she slips them over the reindeer's antlers, since, remember, that'll make them more aerodynamic or something. Who says moose don't fly? Yeah, I guess you gotta be careful what you say. Moose can't fly! You don't have to worry about offending any moose by saying that because it's not a slur! I have GPS, Santa. I could use it tonight, little Hal. You don't need that! You're Santa Claus! You've been flying around the Earth for hundreds of years now! You should know your way around! So they hitch Hal up to the front of the team, because he knows how to lead Santa's sleigh, and they start on their way. And Santa's sleigh is purple? Did he borrow it from Prince? But they turn around because Hal can't fly anywhere without his sister. Holly, put on some antlers and harness up. You're on the team, too. <laughs> oh my god, just look at how this shot is framed. This is begging for them to share a passionate kiss of lovers realized. On, Holly! On, Hal! On, Dasher! On, Yo! Let's just go! I can't say all of your names because we only have six reindeer instead of eight! Ho 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 ho! Nothing can stop us! Because we're in love! Ho ho ho! Merry Christmas to all! And to all a good night! Wait, 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 stop! All of this buildup for the worst storm in history. The storm that would be so bad that it would make Santa Claus cancel Christmas for the first time in the hundreds of years that he's been doing it. And it's only focused directly over his workshop? Oh no, there's the storm to end all storms. How will we ever get out of it? Walk away from it. And so 
it happened that I, Santa, was able to deliver presents and smiles that stormy Christmas Eve, thanks to a brother and sister moose who were holding hands the entire time they were flying. So that was Holly and Hal Moose, our uplifting Christmas adventure. Can you see why this was Build-A-Bear's only movie? It starts off cute and harmless enough, but it just ends up shooting itself in the foot. It doesn't have anything to do with the Build-A-Bear concept, or bears in general. The attempts at making Santa Claus and his operation more believable just end up introducing a whole slew of plot holes. And I'm sorry, but the sexual tension between these two siblings is more than a little disconcerting. It really does read like maybe the first draft of the story was about two friends who realized their deeper feelings for each other, but the Build-A-Bear people didn't want that kind of dynamic associated with their sweet, innocent little product and changed them to be brother and sister, but otherwise changed nothing about their interaction with each other. So yeah, this movie was far from brilliant, but then what do you expect when the casting and talent coordination was done by a sandwich? I'm sorry, Build-A-Bear. You might know how to build a bear, but you don't know how to build a movie. This nice list is so long. Where can I get more toys? Build a bear workshop! Santa needs our help. Hands in. Team Santa! You can make any of Santa's eight reindeer. Each one includes a medallion that unlocks exclusive games on our free Merry Mission app, so you can help Santa on the go. Hurry, it's almost Christmas. Build a Bear Workshop, the most fun you'll ever make. Animals, outfits, and accessories sold separately. Ask your parents before going online. Hi, what brings you to Build a Bear Workshop today? Just checking out the competition. We have a nice workshop here. Do you want to make a stuffed animal? Yes. No, yes. actually, we have all this stuff up north, so we're cool. Uh, no. <laughs> We don't have any of this. Yes, we do. No, we well, maybe not all of it, no. but we have some of the uh -uh. things that... No. No. We don't have any of this. This holiday, Build-A-Bear Workshop is Santa's workshop. Right now, you can make your very own Frosty the Snowman. Only at Build-A-Bear Workshop, where best gifts are made. Ask your parents before going online. Making a holiday reindeer is my favorite Christmas thing. Oh, yeah? Why? Because you get to choose it? No. Well, is it because you get to make it soft and cuddly? Then it's when you get to dress them, right? No, because I get to make it with you, Daddy. Join the merry mission. Make it a season to remember only at Build-A-Bear Workshop. You just f what's in your heart? Oh.